Hi everyone, I am Frida here, and welcome to today's episode, where I'm going to be reviewing the Quimor's Dagger Hand Cannon, and also provide you the ideal god roll for you to get. The Quimor's Dagger is a legendary 110 RPM hand cannon that can only be gotten through the Iron Banner, as a match drop or through its packages. A very slow firing, hard hitting and beefy hand cannon that packs quite a punch, Quimor's Dagger is a high impact hand cannon that can get the job done via 3 taps, so 1 to the head and 2 to the body, and vice versa. Because of its frame type, the current meta and the stats, which looks quite interesting for the weapon, underneath it doesn't make it much of a sought after weapon for many reasons. With certain perks, this weapon can fit into today's current meta easily, but for us to get an ideal role, we need to look into many things about the weapon its stats, its RNG's perks, its functions in the Crucible and in PvE content. All of these are looking to is improving its strengths and weaknesses. And if we can focus on these areas and make them a tad more better, then at least we know that somewhere down the line, when 110s do get a buff in the future, you know exactly what to aim for. But let's first take a look at what we're dealing with. Impact 92, range 64, stability 30, handling 30, reload speed 31, aim assist 67, recoil direction 98, zoom 14 and magazine 7. Currently shown, the weapon excels well in its impact, range and aim assist, which for hand cannons such as ours allows them to be effective from 5 to 20 plus meters. And then further off, the weapon's drop off damage will kick in, and then for 30 plus meters your damage will reduce to the point of not connecting, or connecting but requiring a number of shots to kill. I advise you to stay within the 5 to 20 meters range to make full use of the weapon's capabilities. With the weapon's impact being the main selling point, you'll be able to 3 tap players within your effective range by landing 1 critical hit, which equals 91, and landing 2 body shots, which equals 50, or vice versa. Its TDK is around 1.7, which is not too great, but it's understandable for the weapon's frame type it is. If it was to compete against, let's say, adaptive frame hand cannon with a 0.87 TDK, or a precision flame with a 0.80 TTK. You see that you're getting more bang for your buck by going with the latter, as they offer a faster TTK, and most likely have a faster RPM, which plays a big part in getting kills. To improve on this TTK, we can use perks like Kill Clip or Rampage to lower our TTK to make it from a 3 tap to a 2 tap. As you can see on the screen, this is how it affects weapons TTK overall. Kill Clip added will equal 0.53. Rampage from 1 to level 3 added will equal 0.53 as well. That's basically halved our TDK and allowed us to use at least one less bullet to kill, which is a nice trade off for this specific weapon type. Unfortunately, it can't roll with Rampage, so Kill Clip is your only option. Its recoil direction with a stat of 98 is also great as your shots will be near or pretty much vertical when landing, and with a high aim assist, range, and impact provided, you have an easier time with engaging most players and consistently landing shots. No further improvements for this area is needed. However, its stability, handling and reload speed are very low, with stability at 30, handling at 30 and reload speed at 31. Stability for this weapon is a must if you want a chance to take on players effectively, as your stability and accuracy overall won't allow you to engage most players in PvP, simply because your stability will be hard to control. Your shots will always be vertical, but it doesn't mean your shots will always land if your stability is low. Although we have good range, impact and aim assist, and recoil direction that we can generally work with, we could pick our fights out and still do decently well on most maps, but our stability is the biggest threat for the weapon. You're then left with handling and reload speed that also affect the weapon to a degree. Not so bad, as the way the weapon is designed you can stay behind your teammates or cover and use them as support or getting your kills, or better off just playing safe. Luckily, there's a number of perks we can look out for to turn this weapon from an instant shard to an instant keep. So firstly, let's focus on the mass work, and straight away you want to have stability at plus 10, as this is the one major weaknesses for the weapon, as it lacks control, as previously stated. This should be your number one priority of mass work to have, unless you have other perks or scopes that provide the same benefits you're looking for. This is what you should be aiming for, overall. Every burst stability given as a weapon will help with smoothing out your shots, and in the crucible, the first shot that lands is the one that dictates who is the victor. If you don't manage to get stability mass work, then your next best choice would probably be a handling mass work for faster accuracy and ADS and speed, or a reload mass work, but only if you have something like kill clip to benefit the weapon. For mods, there's not a lot to really pick out from, but I would recommend these top 3, ranging from sprint grip, radar boost, and radar tuner. 
These are the best mods in my opinion you should ideally look into and use, as they will aid you well in most of your fights, and counter balance mod isn't needed because the verticality of the weapon is already good. For the scopes, we are given 6 to choose from, and the vast majority of them focus on increased handling speed, stability, range, aim assist and zoom. Remember, what we want to have is better stability or handling, as these are the most focused areas that will affect how we engage in most fights. So what we should look out for is a fast draw HCS which provides a plus 15 handling, plus 5 in stability and plus 5 in aim assist. Steady hand HCS which offers us plus 10 in handling, plus 10 in stability and plus 5 in aim assist. And true sight HCS which offers us plus 3 range, plus 3 handling, plus 3 stability and plus 5 aim assist. These are the best overall scopes to go with as they all focus on the needed areas for the hand cannons that the weapon is most weakest in. Your strongest choice of scope should be the Steady Hand HES for its bonuses in stability and handling, and then the Fast Draw HES as your secondary choice. True Sight comes third as it's a good scope with solid stats, but they're a lot more weaker compared to the first two. The rest of the scopes left don't really offer us any room for improvements on the weapon, so don't worry about using them. Oh. Column 2. Lots of perks to pick from, but only a handful will be useful. Remember, we are looking for anything that could boost our stability. So, Tactical Mag offers us a plus 5 in stability and plus 10 in reload and plus 10 in magazine. Not the strongest of stability stats, but to run with, but anything is better than nothing. Steady Rounds greatly improves our stability by plus 15, but minus 5 in range. The trade-off against our range is completely fine, as we have enough to compensate the loss, but the boost to stability is what we want to aim for. If we can get a plus 10 in Masterwork stability, as well as Steady Rounds, our stability will come to 55 overall, which is more than enough for us to compete in when we run fights with little drawbacks. Flared Magwell, the same as Tactical Mag, so nothing too great as it gives us a plus 5 in stability and plus 15 in reload, but still worth keeping if you don't manage to get anything else. We do also have Drop Mag for its high increase in reload speed, but trade off of wasting ammo faster, and Alloy Magazine, which is the same as Drop Mag but only activates once you use up your full magazine. Both of these can aid in increasing the weapon's reload speed by a large amount, and pair well with perks such as Rampage, Kill Clip or Zen Moment. Although they focus primarily on reload speed, we still have the other columns that can change the weapon for what it needs. In column 3, we have the following to now look out for. Outlaw, which greatly reduces our reload speed when the hitting position hits. As the weapon is a free tap, if we land a headshot, it's invertible not to make full use of this perk especially as increased reload speed for an aggressive frame hand cannon is always going to be beneficial. Also loaded in holster, which is quite an underrated perk for many weapons but does have its usage, and for once benefits this weapon by a lot by automatically reloading it once you stir it away, which for a weapon with a low reload speed is quite a treat. If you're in a heated fight, for example where you need to rely on both your secondary and primary to take out your target, having this on your weapon automatically topped up will allow you to synchronize certain weapons to engage in more aggressive tactics, if you wish, but it's definitely a perk that suits the weapon well from my experience. Snapshot Sights, not much to say, but beneficial for increasing the handling speed and landing the first shot, which pairs well with opening shot when you look into how both these perks play into each other. Now Rangefinder is good for increasing range and aim assist sticking us further out, but both of these two areas don't need that much improvements, as our engagement range is always going to be around 10 to 50 plus meters. So you can still have it, and you can still use it if you like to, and I'm not saying it's a bad perk, but I don't really see that much usage for this weapon because of, like I said, stability being a major factor in how you land your shots from further distances. Mutant Target is just like Rangefinder, where it's good on some weapons, but isn't always the first choice to go with. In most fights, as a weapon is a slow rate of fire, you won't be able to engage in a lot of 1v1 fights against players with fast weapons for example. But it does offer us a plus 10 in aim assist and plus 2 mobility, which can help with strafing much more easily and landing shots much more accurately. But I find it a 50 50 perk to run with for an aggressive frame hand cannon because of its RPM that plays a role in the perk as well. And Threat Detector is situational, and doesn't fit the weapon that well in my experience because of how slow it takes to fire the weapon in general. And then getting the major boost in the area that you need it for is, of course, a pro, but it's also situational because like I said the frame type that we're using is very slow and you're not gonna have a lot of success in 
in 1v1 fight in close quarters with this hand cannon against someone that's using a, some, for example, a recluse or a shotgun or even a sidearm, you're gonna lose basically. In Column 4, we have 7 perks to pick and choose, and everything is viable to use depending on how well they synchronize with the other columns. Out of those, the top ones to pick are Kill Clip, a purple perk to have for the weapon where it can decrease our TDK to 0 0.56 and make our weapon a 2 tap weapon in the Crucible. Now, for a weapon like this, we need to remember that we need something like a Drop Mag um, reloading, sp reloading Speed perk on this weapon to make fully use of the Kill Clip. Because Although yes, you can still use Kill Clip effectively and still get 2 taps against most players, because of how slow it fires, it feels like you won't be getting that much benefits from it. So from my opinion, if you can try to get your reloading speed at a much higher rate and still have Kill Clip activate at a much decent and effective rate, then I would say yes, you won't have to worry so much about stability because generally you're going to be in your effective range anyway. But that's only if you can try to increase your reload speed to be a bit more faster and pair up with kill clip. If not, then try and focus on getting kill clip and stability to increase. At the moment, the ideal perk to work with as it increases our stability when landing hits with our weapon, open a shot, which increases our range and accuracy on the first shot made, and is an ideal perk for any hand cannon of all types. Explosive rounds and time payload are two perks that are good to have in PvE and PvP, to a certain degree. Both perks can allow you to disrupt weapons with low recoil direction, which can allow you to have an upper hand on them, and on 110 frames and on console, it really does cause a lot of flinch for players to generally fight back against. However, it also splits your damage as well, with your time payload explosion doing slightly more damage than your base bullet damage, and vice versa for explosive rounds. In my opinion, these are good perks to use, but I would trade them for something like Kill Clip instead, which actually decreases our TDK and is more beneficial to use. You also have to remember, the frame time you have has built in a high caliber round, so combining the two make it even more dominant for us to use, but it's not a perk that I would say is something you really would have to get. I would say if you get it, keep it, test it, see how it plays, and if you notice that you're winning a lot more fights with these two perks, then gently keep it. If not, then shard it. Hip fire grip is usable as well, but not something to keep for a 110 frame. And full prep offers us an increase in reload and handling speed, but only when crouching, and can come in handy, but not worth keeping if your other columns already cover these areas. So now the conclusion, and these are the ideal parts to look out for when getting the necessary roll for the weapon. But don't worry if you don't get these, as like always, you can keep on trying and trying again against RNG, and hope for the best. So, we have Masterwork being Stability, handling all reload speed at plus 10. Mod being Sprint Grip, Radar Boost or Radar Tuner. Scopes being Fast Draw, Steady Hand or True Sight. Column 2 being Steady Round or Flared Magwell. Column 3, Outlaw or Auto Loading Holster. Column 4, Kill Clip or Zen Moment. With the Criminal's Dagger being a slow firing hand cannon that can kill within 3 taps, we can be quite lenient on the perks we use, as long as we get our stability to at least 50 or more, as the stats for weapon are pretty good, but stability is the main thing that holds weapon back from being very dominant. Its reload speed and handling are also quite low, but do remember, you're not going to be engaging in a lot of head-on 1v1 fights, as your RPM will allow you to do so. If by chance you don't get any stability perks to help your weapon, it's not the end of the world as it's still usable, you just need to pace your shot and watch your fights. If you can get the role that has Flared Madwell, Outlaw and Kill Clip for example, you'll still be able to compete against generally anyone as long as you engage correctly. Stability is key for the weapon but it's not the end of the world if you don't get any. Plan out your engagements, engage when you get a chance and don't push unless you have the upper hand. This is the rule I always follow when playing in the Crucible and I find that doing this allows me to win more fights when not being too aggressive, unless I need to be. So that comes to the end of the weapons review video and God War episode. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the content then do leave a like, a sub and also do press that little bell button just right there to stay always updated to when I upload, as I appreciate a lot if you do. But like always thanks for watching Guardians and I do hope to see you all again soon.